The three trails are all overgrown, but pine and chrysanthemum remain. In this uh, long first section of the first grove, we first see Tao Yuanming arriving by boat. He's seen in his familiar image as if he were walking through the forest, not as if he were standing in a boat. And then on the shore, servants and others greeting him, one of them pulling the boat in by a rope, another with a mallet, probably to drive in the peg for fastening the boat. Then, at the gateway of the house and in the courtyard, we see his wife and children coming to greet him, and behind the pine trees, and presumably the chrysanthemums, although it's hard to make them out in such a picture. These are, of course, plants very closely associated with Tao Yuan Ming, pine trees standing for uprightness and virtue and all kinds of things, and the official chrysanthemums because they were a favorite flower of his. Okay, the next one, please. The second painting in the scroll illustrates this next passage in the ode. Leading my children, I enter the house, where a pitcher is brimming with wine. Pulling toward me, cup and jug, I pour myself a drink. Spying the trees in the courtyard, I am happy of face. Leaning at the southern window, I convey my pride. How easy it is to be content with just a little space. In this picture, we see Tao Yuanming along with his wife and children, presumably having a drink, uh, while two figures outside in the courtyard are doing something, I'm not sure what. A woman approaching a young man, one of his sons, carrying something on a tray. Okay, the next, please. Section 3. I pass my days in the garden, doing what I please, and though I set a gate there, it's always shut. An old man leaning on his cane, I stroll and rest, lifting my head at times to gaze into the distance. As clouds aimlessly emerge from the peaks, birds weary of flying know it is time to return. But until the sun is covered and almost gone, I stroke the bark of a lonely pine and linger on. In the picture, Tao Yuanming appears on the top of a small hill in his garden, behind a huge structure of garden rocks, leaning against a pine tree, presumably watching the sun set. He's on a kind of island, separated from the rest of the garden by streams at left and right, with bridges over them. The next, please. Oh, to go home. I will cancel my friendships and cease to roam. The world and I shall put each other aside. Were I to yoke my carriage, what should I seek? I'm happy having heartfelt talks with kith and kin, dissolving my cares in the joy of zither and books. The farmers tell me that spring is near its end, and there's work to do out in the western fields. The picture accompanying this stanza of the poem shows Tao Yuanming seated in an open building with a number of people, presumably his kith and kin, enjoying food and drink. A chin, or zither, is beside him on the floor. Servants stand in front of the building, and on the left, outside the fence, are people with horses and an ox. Maybe farmers come to see him. A man, perhaps a visiting friend, is seen arriving in lower left. The next, please. Fifth section. At times I order up my covered cart. At times I row upon my lonely skiff, skiff, exploring up the canyons, hidden and secluded, or taking a rough and rugged path that's across the hills, as trees happily approach the time of blooming, and the fountains bubble up and start to flow. Glad the myriad things have each their season, I am moved that my own life must have an end. In this picture, Tao is seen in his ox-drawn covered cart, accompanied by servants carrying luggage. In front of them, a wood-gatherer with a load of branches is seen coming out from the trees. Beyond, in the upper center, a boat moving off along the river or the canal, presumably carrying Tao Yuanming and his lonely skiff, Actually, it's a comfortable passenger boat, rowed or pulled by servants. The next, please. The sixth section. All is over and done. How much longer will my body sojourn in this world? Why not let my heart decide whether to leave or stay? Why hustle and bustle about? Where is it I would go? Wealth and station are not what I desire, and I have no expectation of reaching heaven. But I cherish going out alone on a fine morning and planting my staff at times to weed and hoe. 
In the picture, Tao is seen in the lower left, weeding and hoeing in one of his fields. A boy's servant stands beside him, and beyond, above him in the picture, a real farmer wields a real hoe. In the upper right, an irrigation ditch with a wooden dam for shutting it off or letting it flow. And below this, a man on horseback, presumably a servant, and another beside him, both watching Tao and ready to take him home when he's done being a gentleman farmer. The next, please. The seventh and last section. I climb the eastern bank, whistling loud and long, and overlooking the clear stream, compose a poem. I shall ride with the changes until the final return. Happy in heaven's decree, what is there to doubt? In this seventh and last picture, Taoyuan Ming appears twice. In the upper right, where he has climbed the eastern bank and is whistling loud and long as he writes, and at the left, where he sits dangling his feet in the stream, composing a poem while gazing across at the far shore. This series of pictures, more or less following the same compositions, is endlessly copied in later centuries. This is perhaps the earliest surviving set of them. Whether these paintings originally went with the first inscription in the scroll, written, as I said, in 1110, is a question. From their style, I would take the pictures to be somewhat later, by some good Southern Song professional master. But I haven't studied the scroll really carefully. Next, please. The first inscription in the scroll, seen here, is the one written in 1110 by Li Peng, beginning, Once at Shan Gu's, that is Huang Ting Jin's, Huang Ting Jin, who lived from 1045 to 1105, friend of Su Dong Po and so on, as I said. Once at Shan Gu's place, I saw a small painted screen with Going Home, done by Bosher. Bosher is Li Gong Lin. Its concept was simple but far-reaching, and in atmosphere it was generally similar to this painting. Shan Gu pointed out the figure of Tao Yuan Ming and said to me, Bosher's figure painting is at its best in this screen. Well, then it goes on for a long way. Whether, as I said before, this inscription originally went with the present set of paintings, and whether the text of Tao Yuan Ming's poem that precedes each of the paintings is also written by the same Li Peng are much de debated matters. You can read all about it in the Freer's website for Sun Yuan paintings or in Tom Lawton's book. I'm not taking any stand on those big issues, only presenting this as a fine early version of a famous set of pictures, of which several later versions survive. Tom Lawton, in his treatment of this scroll in his Chinese figure painting book, makes it a 12th century painting as I would, and notes that the style is completely unlike that of any painting reliably associated with Li Gong Lin, so that old that old attribution is, is to be completely abandoned uh, or discounted. As we've seen already, and we'll see more as we go along, uh, Li Gong Lin's name was attached to lots of old paintings to increase their value. That's all for this scroll. Now let's go on. Uh, continuing with uh, kinds of court painting, I put on this leaf, this is an anonymous leaf as I remember, in the Palace Museum in uh, Taiwan, um, and, and it represents uh, silk production, uh, sericulture, and there may have been a, another leaf with rice culture beside it. These were big themes, especially in, um, in uh, court painting. In fact, uh, the original Gungzhi II, the sericulture and agriculture, rice culture and silk culture, that is, were made uh, under Gaozong, and uh, as it's recorded, who, who painted them and so forth. And uh, my argument about that, then they were done again in the Yuan Dynasty, uh, scrolls that are uh, done under the Mongols, the Mongol rulers, uh, scrolls that are now in the Freer Gallery, and then they were done again as uh, paintings, but also uh, printed, uh, engraved, and widely disseminated in the Qing Dynasty by the Manchus. Now, my argument, which I made in the political themes uh, chapter in my three alternative histories book, uh, is that the, these were people who were asserting their, uh, their uh, acceptance of the settled ways of, uh, of Han Chinese society. In other words, silk culture, uh, rice culture, are things that very settled people do. On the other hand, 
they were separating themselves from nomadic peoples. In the case of Gaozong, he was setting himself against the Jin, or Tartars, uh, Jin nomads, formerly nomads, who were occupying the north, the Jurchans. In the case of the Yuan, they were the, uh, the Mongols, and in the case of the early Qing, it was the Manchus. Anyway, I made this argument, and it's been taken up by some others, um, uh, and I, I think it has it's a, a, a good point about how these paintings were originated and how they were, and the circumstances in which they were carried on. Okay, enough of that for now. At any rate, um, it's a picture in which you see women in the foreground uh, doing various things to prepare silk, and then some, I don't know what's happening in the background. It's hard to say. I mean, I'm not not clear. Somebody else can answer that. Before going on, however, let me insert here a painting of the same subject that has just come to my attention, reproduced in one of a set of books on Chinese figure painting, published in 2006 in Beijing, but not known to me until I ordered them recently from a book catalog. This is a painting similar in subject and composition to the album leaf that I just showed, depicting silk culture, women spinning and weaving in a house. This one, however, is a hanging scroll, 163 centimeters by 92 centimeters in size, painted in ink and colors on silk, and it's in the National Museum of China, the big museum on Tiananmen Square that was formerly the Chinese Historical Museum. It's an especially fine and compositionally interesting example of the Vengzhou Tu, or picture of plowing and weaving, and the composition includes both. In the upper right, oxen in the field, supplying the plowing pictorial reference, and below them men carrying bundles and baskets of what may be rice plants in from the fields. Then to the left of those, both men and women picking mulberry leaves to feed the silkworms. And then at the bottom of the composition, women in open houses engaged in cultivating the silkworms to get the silk and weaving it into cloth. Next, please. A detail of the lower part. The trees, the architecture, and the figures all seem acceptable as Southern Song Academy style, although I'd have to see the original to be really sure. In any case, this is a fine and unusual example of an important political subject, and it merits more attention in studies of this important political theme, pictorial theme, I mean. Uh, Gungjur two paintings and prints from later centuries are in hand scroll or album form. This is unusual in crowding it all into a single hanging scroll. Now here is a painting in the Palace Museum. Uh, in in, in uh, no, this is in in uh, in uh, the Palace Museum in Beijing. Um, a painting with a well, inscription at the top, which is written by the Emperor Ningzong, who reigned in the late. 12th, early 13th century, 1194 to 1224, and it's a title. It's a painting titled "Spinning Silk," um, and um, the uh, it, it, it's a painting that uh, shows and uh, praises, in effect, village industry. That is to say, women are working late at night. It's uh, it's late, and here here's a detail of the of the foreground. Women are, are busy spinning silk on these uh, spindles. And, um, well, it has a bit of anecdotal uh, detail to entertain. The, 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 their companion here, another woman, uh, is uh, waving her arms and shouting, presumably, saying, look, hey, little Ignatz over there has fallen in the water. He's going to drown if we don't catch him, get him. Uh, anyway, whatever. <clears throat> and um, you see the little boy, one of them close to the shore with his clothes off and the other sitting on the shore. Okay, so it's, a, it's anecdotal, but the main theme is that these women are occupying themselves into the night, uh, working, working ahead, rather than going off and, uh, and uh, uh, resting, so to speak. A quite fine painting, and to be read in this, in this way as a, uh, an assertion of the value of uh, village industry and so on. Okay, then here, here just, for, just for another one. This is actually a leaf in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, a fan painting. But just because I, I had a picture of silk production, here's a, a picture of a woman. Here's a detail of it, which I'll put on beside it. 